Hello everyone. On the CDT, I used both the Gossamer Gear The One and z Duplex Lite. So here's my breakdown of the two, and at the end, I will let you know which one I think is better. <laughs> So I started the trail with the Gossamer Gear The One, which I purchased back in 2019. So just be aware that there is a newer model out there, which is slightly different, but overall they're pretty similar. The Gossamer Gear The One measures out inside at 83 inches in length, which is about 205 centimetres. And then at it, the head, it is 33 inches which is about 83 centimetres and then it tapers a bit and is 21 inches in width at the foot box which is about 53 centimetres and then in height at the apex of the tent so the highest bit of the tent uh, it's at 45 inches which is about 115 114 centimetres so that's the diameter of it inside now the total footprint of the tent when it is set up is more than that by the time you stake out the vestibules and uh, the extra material that helps keep the inside dry. Uh, but what's important to me is the amount of space that you've got to use inside. The tent weighs about 588 grams which is around 20 ounces and that's with the stuff sack and six. It is made out of waterproof nylon and in 2024 costs around 255 American dollars. Now let me tell you what I love about this tent. Even though it is a one person tent, I found that it was more like one and a half persons. And at five foot six, it was the Goldilocks tent for me. It was the perfect size to fit me and my gear inside and allow me to sit up. It is also super easy to set up. All you do is stake out the four corners and then get your hiking poles. I'm using a dowel here because I need to get new hiking poles. Uh, but then you just put the hiking poles in and then stake out to the vestibules or the side and then walk around and tighten it all up and voila, it is up. Now, it's also helpful on the Gossamer Gear, the one to stake out the uh, bathtub floor. It helps maximize the internal space inside. But I found a hack for that so I didn't have to carry four extra stakes. I just attached elastic to where you would stake it out and then looped that elastic around the stakes that were already in the ground. I also loved the L-shaped door. It was super easy to undo and do up and to get in and out of. Now, while not the lightest weight tent out there, it still comes in at a pretty good weight and an affordable price. Now what I don't like about it, it holds a decent amount of water weight. Now let me clarify that. It does not at all get you wet. When you're inside and it's raining, it keeps you perfectly dry. The issue is, is that if it does rain or get condensation, that seeps into the nylon material. And even though I tried my best in the mornings to wipe off the excess water and give it a good shake, ultimately I was still packing up a sodden tent. Uh, it was taking on more water than a sinking canoe, or at least that's what it felt like. It meant that I was carrying a decent amount of water weight, or water weight around in my pack until I got a chance to stop and dry it out. Carrying around that water weight was one of the key reasons that I swapped to the duplex once in Colorado. There was just enough thunderstorms and areas where condensation built up that I didn't like carrying around that extra water weight and taking so long to dry the tent that I switched out to the duplex. As a non-freestanding tent, you do need to be somewhat picky about the ground that you set it up on. And sometimes the CDT did not give this luxury. So there were a few times that during storms or high wind in the middle of the night, I had the tent collapse on me. 
<laughs> my tent fell on me twice so I had to jump out and like re-secure it now I learned some tips and tricks to help combat that uh, and it did hold up really well in the basin which was known for high wind but I was aware that if there was a storm or it was particularly particularly windy I just would need to be aware that that might be a possibility during the night. Finally, the last negative. It was slightly annoying to only have the ability to get in and out of one side. This is a bit of a nitpicky point and mostly it was fine. And it was mostly annoying when I was camped with friends. So I would look at the ground and go, all right, I need to set my tent up in this direction so my head is up here so I don't get blood pulling in it overnight. And when I would do that, inevitably, my tent was flipped around the other way from where my friends, friends were set up. So I couldn't sit in my tent and look out my door and chat to them who were sitting in their tents, uh, which was just slightly annoying. It's not the biggest deal but I did find it annoying. And also not having a second door just limits the amount of cross breeze that can happen, which means a bit more condensation will build up as well. Now for z -Pak's duplex light. The interior dimensions are in length, it is 90 inches, which is about 2.3 meters. And then in width, it is 40 inches, which is about 102 centimetres. And then, then at the apex, which is the highest point of the tent, it is at 48 inches, which is about 122 centimetres. It weighs 509 grams, which is almost 18 ounces. And that includes the stuff sack and six tent stakes. It is made out of Dyneema composite fabric, uh, otherwise known as DCF, and in 2024 comes in at 669 American dollars. What I did love about the duplex light was the DCF material and its ability to have water bead off it. So while it still got wet when it rained or condensation built up inside, I had the ability to wipe it down and then give it a good shake in the morning and more water would just bead off it at that point. It wouldn't seep in in the same way. And so while I was still packing up a wet tent, it was not the same amount of water weight that I was carrying around. And then when I did stop to dry it out later in the day, it also dried quicker than what the nylon does of the Gossamer Gear, the one. Now, perhaps by the time I got the duplex in Colorado, I had become a pro at staking out a non-freestanding tent. However, I just felt that overall, the duplex light was more stable. It didn't flap in the wind in the same way as the Gossamer Gear, the one would, and I never had it collapse on me in the middle of the night. It also was super simple to set up. Like the Gossamer gear, the one you just staked out each of the four corners, put your trekking poles into the apex, staked out the vestibules, and then walked around and tightened up all the guy lines. Uh, the duplex also had um, ropes in the middle of the head and the middle of the foot end that you could stake out and that would help lift that material a little bit. I believe the new Gossamer gear also has that function. I didn't actually really use it, it wasn't a problem for me. The few times that I did use it was when it was raining a lot and I just wanted to keep that material further away from my head and my feet. I also loved the ability to set the duplex up in any direction that I could get in and out of either door that I chose. And what I would often do is leave one of the vestibule flaps open at my head and on the other side, the vestibule flap open at my feet and this would create a cross breeze uh, that wasn't directly across my face uh, during the night, which helped with the condensation build up. The duplex light is also a win in the weight category, although not significantly. Now, what I don't like about the duplex light, it is either slightly too big or slightly too small. Let me explain that. 
See, it's technically a two-person tent. However, to put two people in it would have been extremely tight. Doable, but you would have been up close and personal. As a one-person tent, there was too much room. Plenty of room for me and my gear and some space to spare. Now, I could have gone down to one of the one-person Z-Pax tents. However, a few of my friends on trail had those. And while one of them really liked it, he had to keep his gear outside his tent, which I don't like doing. And the other one didn't like the fact that A, his gear was outside of his tent and B, he still felt like there wasn't enough room in uh, the one person tents. So while a nitpicky point, I would have liked uh, the duplex with both doors, but just in a slightly less wide format. That would have been, I feel, the perfect tent. I also didn't love the rainbow door. When I undid it, I had to be careful to make sure it fell inside the tent so that it didn't get in any dirt. Because if the dirt gets into the zipper, then over time that will stop working. And it was also harder to do up and undo. You just had to reach further to do it when you were inside the tent. Or when you were outside the tent, you often had to reach under a vestibule flap to be able to get it and zip it all the way up. The DCF material on the duplex light is thinner than other Z-Pax tents, which is absolutely fantastic in saving weight. The one problem with it is that it is super see-through. So one friend had the white one and you could clearly see his outline when he was in his tent. Another friend had the blue one and I had the olive green version, which was slightly better, not as see-through, but I was aware that if I was camped around people, I just had to be super aware uh, of when I got changed in my tent at night or in the mornings. Finally, DCF material is expensive. And while the upside of it is that it is lightweight and more water resistant, it does come at that hefty price point. So which tent would I recommend? Well, for the average hike of three to four days or even a week, and perhaps even a long hike like the PCT where through the Sierras, NorCal and all of Oregon, I got hardly any rain. I would recommend the Gossamer Gear, the one. It is the perfect size. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, but not significantly. And it comes at a sweet price point. However, if I was going to do most of my hiking in a cold and rainy climate, or do a long trail like the Pacific Northwest Trail or the Great Divide, then uh, I would go with a Z-Pax DCF tent. The reason for that is I just really like the ability to be able to have water beat off it more and then dry it out more quickly. I also recognize that part of that is because I feel the cold and so I want to ensure that each night I have a dry tent to get back into if it is going to be cold. And so that ability to get it dried out quickly is a win for me despite the price point. If you have used either of these tents and have other pros or cons, uh, please let me know in the comments below and that'll be really helpful for others as well as they try to make a decision about which tent to buy and use.